I'm sorry, but you can't make a withdrawal. What? It seems there's only about one dollar in your bank account. Wait, there's got to be a mistake. How did it come to this? I was trying to withdraw money from my bank account for my son, Mike's tuition fees. Then I received a call from the credit card company. Hello? We're seeing a charge of $30,000 here. What? I exclaimed louder than before. Other customers in the vicinity turned to look, wondering what was going on. Ma'am? Can you give me a moment? I need to check something. I had a suspicion. After hanging up, I called someone else. Did you use my credit card? Yeah, about that. My parents wanted a new car, so I bought it for them in full. My husband Dylan, unapologetically laughing over the phone. All the savings for Mike's education. Do you even realize what that money was for? Come on, don't make such a fuss. It's not like it was for anything important. Hearing those words, something inside me broke. You better be responsible for your own words. What? It's your fault for leaving your credit card around like that. Don't joke. Even if it's for your parents, you can't just recklessly spend like that. You have no right to tell me that. Realizing arguing was futile, I decided on a final course of action. Fine. Hey, wait a sec. I hung up and immediately called the police. Dylan had to face the consequences. There was no way I could forgive him. I'm Emily. 45 years old, working in sales at a cosmetics company. My family consists of my husband Dylan and our 18-year-old son Mike. Our relationship started through work and evolved from there. Emily, do you plan to get married in the future? What? Where is this come from? I was just thinking since you're so beautiful. If we're talking about looks, Dylan, you're quite handsome yourself. Oh, come on. We were both 26, thinking about marriage. Such conversations became frequent, and before we knew it, we were dating. A year later, we got married. Dylan wanted me to be a housewife after marriage, but I wanted to continue working. Since I'm going to keep working, how about we just merge our bank accounts? M. That might get confusing. Let's keep them separate. Really? Well, I'll be the breadwinner, paying rent and groceries. You can handle the savings. Okay then. Living together revealed aspects of Dylan I hadn't noticed before. Discussing it with friends, they said it's often the case, which somewhat reassured me. Things were going well after that, so I didn't say anything too strongly to Dylan. Things went on like this until Mike was born a year into our marriage. We really need to cut back on unnecessary expenses now that we have a child. I was on maternity leave and decided to talk to Dylan when he got back from work. I thought that if I talked to him, he would understand. You think I'm wasting money? I should be able to spend as I like sometimes. Of course, but my worry is that you're overspending. Ugh. Dylan sighed, looking annoyed. I was worried if we were okay, being this way so early in our marriage. But the problem didn't solve itself as time went by. And the issues weren't just with Dylan. My parents are coming over to visit soon. What? Why didn't you tell me earlier? Sorry, I totally forgot. This was just the beginning. I was constantly being put in difficult situations by Dylan and my in-laws. And then, the following Saturday, my in-laws arrived. Hello, Emily. Long time no see. Please come in. Don't mind if I do. At first glance, the parents-in-law seemed quite caring and to others, there seemed to be no issues. However, perhaps more like a parent and child, they were lax about managing money. How about we go shopping today, since it's a special occasion? Shopping? Yes. There's something I've been wanting for a long time. But since Mike was in a bad mood and wouldn't stop crying no matter what, I ended up staying home. All right, I'm counting on you to house sit. With that, Dylan left with the parents-in-law. When they returned about two hours later, I was surprised to see them. 
What's with all those bags in your hands? Oh, these? Yeah, I guess I bought too much. Moreover, the bags were printed with logos of famous brands. We're back. Sorry for making you house sit. Oh, no, it's okay. Mother-in-law Rebecca was also carrying bags similar to Dylan's. Then, sitting on the sofa, she started spreading out her purchases as if to show them off to me. I didn't own that much myself. Moreover, since getting married, I've been trying to save money, keeping the future in mind. Thank you for today. I can't believe you bought me so much. It's nothing to worry about. It's just filial piety. Plus, I got a lot too. Watching this exchange was almost headache-inducing. Oh, right. This is for Mike. Saying this, Dylan pulled out a piece of baby clothing from a brand. We had to make you house sit, after all. Father-in-law Bert said with a laugh. I had hoped they might have bought something for me too, but there was nothing, and Dylan and his parents seemed satisfied looking at their own things. The day ended with a family dinner and we said goodbyes, but there was another chance to meet the in-laws at a family gathering. Welcome. Thank you for having us today. Even I, who wasn't much interested in brands, could tell Rebecca was dressed head to toe in brand name clothes. You always seem so plain. This was said while we were drinking coffee in the living room. From the moment she arrived, Rebecca had been looking at me, and this was why. I've been meaning to say this, but you need to take care of your appearance more. Then Dylan joined the conversation. What are you talking about? About Emily being plain. Oh, that. Yeah, I've been meaning to say same. The reason for my plain appearance was because I had more important things to worry about than my own looks. Dylan freely spent money, but I was the one covering the costs from our savings. He didn't realize that our current lifestyle was thanks to that. During my two-day stay at my in-laws, I had to put up with Rebecca's sarcasm the whole entire time. And upon returning home, Dylan started it with my appearance again. Like mom said at home earlier, you should take more care of your appearance. It's embarrassing for me too. Unable to bear it any longer, I vented all my pent-up frustrations. If you're embarrassed, then think a bit more about how you spend money. I've been saying this for a long time. Are we going to have that talk again? I'm tired of hearing it. Tired of hearing it? With Mike growing older, are you planning to keep living like this? Life is going on just fine, isn't it? Dylan laughed and headed to the bedroom. Life went on like this, and before we knew it, Mike had become a junior in high school. Then, one summer afternoon, Dylan came up to me. I have something I want to discuss. Dylan wanting to discuss something was a bad omen. And as expected, my fears were confirmed. A discussion? Sort out your money issues yourself. Haven't said anything yet, have I? Can you pay for some living expenses instead? Had Dylan not listened to me at all? I was so astounded I didn't want to talk anymore. By the way, what are you short on? What I'm short on? Everything. Everything? It hasn't even been a week since payday. Just help me out, okay? Dylan didn't seem to feel any remorse towards me. Reluctantly, I convinced myself it was necessary for our livelihood. This is the last time, okay? Yeah. Even though we were still talking, Dylan was looking at his mobile phone, seemingly bored. And that wasn't all. I'm going out for a bit. Wait. Where are you going? Don't need to tell you. I'll be back by night. And then Dylan left the house. I was left alone in the living room, stunned. Honestly, I've considered divorce more than once or twice. But I didn't because of Mike. While I was thinking about this, Mike came. Huh? Where's dad? He just went out. Maybe he's gone to buy something again? You think so too? Whenever Dylan went out alone without saying where he was going, he invariably ended up buying unnecessary things. As I sighed, Mike made a suggestion. Why don't you just let it go? What? 
I've been watching all this time, and it's clearly too much. But you're still here. I can't do something so irresponsible. That's why I'm saying, once I graduate from college, I'll leave this house to work. Then, Mom, you can be free to do what you want. Thank you. For Mike, who had been watching Dylan's reckless behavior, it must have been too much to tolerate. Mike's words were a relief to me. He was my son and we were a team. Dylan returned before dinner, as expected, with luxury items. If there was money to buy such things, it should be used for living expenses. I was too tired to even complain to Dylan. No matter what I said, he wouldn't listen and would do as he pleased. Some time after I had covered Dylan's expenses. Here. What's this? This is to cover what you paid for me the other day. Saying that, Dylan handed me an envelope. Inside, there was money. Oh, thank you. I hadn't expected him to repay me so soon. When I checked the amount, it was $1,000. It wasn't enough to cover what I paid, but I still felt a little happy. But that brief joy soon turned into a nightmare. All right, I'm taking this back. Hey, what are you doing? Dylan snatched the envelope back from me and put it in his pocket. I did pay you back, right? I'll need it for tomorrow. I don't understand what you're doing. I was confused about what was happening. While I was in panic, Dylan continued. Why are you surprised? Look. Then Dylan handed me the envelope again, only to take it back. He repeated this a few times. So, now I've paid back everything I owe you. I had no energy left to argue back. It was like a child's way of pretending everything was settled. If that's what you think, I won't lend you money again. Why does it come to that? I paid you back, didn't I? Forget it. From that day, I grew to dislike even talking to Dylan. Whenever he asked for something, it was always about money. Even more troublesome were the in-laws. I thought they had been quiet lately, but then suddenly they contacted me. We haven't received this month's allowance. What? Allowance? I haven't heard anything about it. That can't be. Dylan said you would start paying from this month. It's too sudden, I can't. We're in trouble too. We have payments to make. It's your problem, so sort it out. I need it by the day after tomorrow. Wait a minute, Rebecca. She said what she wanted to say and just hung up. I was constantly troubled by this family. Just thinking about it gave me a headache. That night, I asked Dylan what was going on. Rebecca called, but what's this about an allowance? They seemed a bit troubled, so I've been sending them money for a while. But why should I pay? I haven't heard anything about it. Oh, did I forget to mention? And you even told Rebecca that I would be making the deposit. Then just send the allowance. However, I decided not to send the allowance. Nor did I contact the in-laws, ignoring whatever they said. Mike's exams were approaching, and I couldn't afford to focus on such things. Time passed, and Mike got accepted to his first choice of college. Congratulations! You've been working hard for this. The real challenge starts now. Say something to him. Well done. That was the only thing Dylan said without even looking at Mike. Wait a minute. I tried to say something to Dylan, but Mike stopped me. I guess Mike didn't have much expectation from Dylan either. Then trouble came when I went to the bank to pay Mike's tuition. When my number was called and I approached the counter, an unexpected incident occurred. I'm sorry, but you cannot make a withdrawal. What? It seems there is only one dollar in your bank account. Wait, there's got to be a mistake. How did it come to this? I was just trying to withdraw money from the bank account for Mike's tuition payment. Then, a call came from the credit card company. Hello? We have noticed some unfamiliar usage on your credit card, do you have any idea about this? That can't be right, it has to be a mistake. We have a record of the usage. There's a $30,000 charge on your account. 
What? I exclaimed louder than before. Other customers in the bank turned to look at me. Ma'am? Sorry, could you give me a moment? I need to check something. Understood. I had one suspicion in mind. I hung up and called someone. Where are you now? At home. Why are you so panicky? Did you use my credit card? There was a brief silence. Yeah, that. My parents wanted a new car, so I bought it for them in one go. Dylan laughed over the phone, without any sign of remorse. All the money I had saved for Mike's education. Do you even realize what that money was for? Come on, don't make such a fuss. It couldn't have been for anything important. Hearing those words, something inside me crumbled. You better be responsible for your own words. What? Responsible? It's your fault for leaving your credit card out. Don't joke around. Even if it's for your parents, do you realize how stupid this is? I don't need to be lectured by you. I realized it was futile to argue with Dylan. I decided to take the final step. Fine then. Hey, wait. I hung up the phone immediately and then contacted the police. Dylan would have to face the consequences. No matter what, I couldn't forgive this. When I got back home, I confronted Dylan. You better pay back every penny you used without permission. Sorry, I'm a bit busy right now. What? Dylan was getting ready to leave. I told you I bought a car, right? They're treating me to dinner today. Is this really the time for that? We're not done talking yet. Then we can talk when I get back. I'll be late if I stay now. Ignoring my attempts to stop him, Dylan was about to leave when I told him about notifying the police. I just called the police. He stopped in his tracks. What did you say? Did I hear something about the police? It's not your imagination. What the hell did you do? It's obvious, isn't it? You used my credit card without permission. Taking someone's money like that is theft. Your money is mine too. I just used it. And now you're calling the police, what are you thinking? Anyways, pay back the full amount. And make sure you apologize to Mike too. Apologize? Why? Mike has nothing to do with this. I sighed. Using the money for his own desires was just unbelievable. That money you used was saved for Mike's entrance fees and tuition. But thanks to you, we can't even pay that now. Why didn't you tell me sooner? How could I expect you to do something this foolish? Then he started blaming me. Not realizing someone used your credit card, aren't you the foolish one? My anger was rising. Also, you've always looked down on me, haven't you? That's you. Don't you see me as anything more than a wallet? What? You've become such a troublesome woman. I was about to utter the word divorce when Mike, who had been out, returned. What are you doing? Mike. Another fight? Give it a rest. His words were not directed at me, but at Dylan. What's up? You got a complaint against me too? It's not a complaint, it's a warning. If you keep this up, you'll regret it eventually. Regret? You've become quite bold in talking back to Dad, haven't you? Dylan even started snapping at Mike. I regretted ever marrying such a person. Oh, right, I almost forgot to tell you, I'm going on a trip in a week. How can you be so selfish? I thought about taking you guys along, but changed my mind. Just stay home and behave. Dylan laughed at us mockingly and left to buy things for his trip. Left behind, we looked at each other. I'm sorry, Mike. Your tuition. So that's why you were fighting. Now I couldn't even send him to college. Even though it was Dylan's fault, I wouldn't have been surprised if Mike blamed me. But instead of blaming, Mike was concerned about me. It's not your fault, Mom. Dad's the one to blame. And it's not like I can never go to college. I felt grateful to Mike for saying that, 
but was also filled with guilt. I decided I had to get revenge on Dylan to the end. I need your help with something. Of course. I'm on your side, Mom. So, we planned our strategy before Dylan returned. And then, in the morning a week later. See ya. I'll be back the day after tomorrow. I didn't even respond. What's with you? At least say something. Oh, and I paid for this trip with your credit card. Dylan left in a good mood. I wasn't even surprised to hear that. Is he gone? Gone. Shall we start then? Yes, let's. We packed up everything except Dylan's belongings. During this week, we had found a place to move to. We decided to move on the day Dylan went on his trip. We're finally done. It took quite some time. Just need to get the movers now. Soon the movers came, we left a note in the room and headed to the new apartment. I also decided to cancel the lease on the current apartment. I was the one who had originally signed the lease. Thus, a new life with Mike began. I wonder what he'll think when he gets back. He'll probably panic. But whatever happens, I don't care. Serves him right. The day Dylan was supposed to return from his trip arrived. Sure enough, there was a barrage of calls from Dylan. Curious about his reaction, I answered the phone. Emily! Where are you? I don't think I need to tell you that. Stop joking around. I think you're the one who's joking. Did you check the table? The divorce papers? Yes, those. My name is already on them. Fine. Then we'll get divorced. With that, Dylan hung up. The next day, Dylan sent a photo of the signed divorce papers. I felt relieved but still had things to do. I immediately contacted a lawyer. To get back the money he had used without permission. About a month later. What do you mean move out? A panicked call from Dylan came early in the morning. It means just that. I signed the lease, after all. I can do whatever I want with it, right? I can't just accept that. Come back here now. That's impossible. We're divorced, remember? I thought it was time to say everything I wanted to Dylan. Also, I'm getting the money you used back through my lawyer. You did what? Yes. I don't need to hold back anymore. So, I'll do as I please. Who do you think allowed you to live like this? I certainly don't think it was thanks to you. Even over the phone, I could tell Dylan was furious. But his anger couldn't change the reality. Just get out of that house quickly. It's not yours anymore. You'll regret this. He hung up, but I wasn't bothered. In fact, I laughed out loud. What happened? Ah, uh, sorry. That was him just now. And what did he say? Of course, he was angry. Told me that I'd regret this. What's that supposed to mean? It's funny, isn't it? After that, Dylan, unable to do anything, had to leave the house. He truly got what he deserved. Apparently, Dylan moved back to his parents' house, but that was a mistake. Dylan's hell was far from over. The next day after Dylan contacted me, the lawyer informed me that we could formally recover the money. It looked like we could also claim compensation for all the trouble he had caused. How dare you do this to us? Huh? The call from Rebecca was full of complaints. Thanks to you, we're in trouble. We can't make our payments now. How are you going to fix this? That's unfortunate. But it's no longer my problem, and you'll have to resolve it on your end. You should pay in my place since it's your fault. Absolutely not. If you had any gratitude for the help we gave you, you should repay that kindness. I don't feel I owe you anything, so I'm fine. Goodbye. This time, I was the one to hang up. It was a truly liberating moment. This outcome should have been easy to predict. A family all lacks about money was bound to collapse eventually. Blinded by immediate desires, they failed to see the reality of their situation. We finally got our money back. 
Yes, but we couldn't make the college payment in time. It's okay. I'll try again next year. Mike was incredibly positive. Seeing him like that lifted my spirits. Later, I heard that Dylan and his family, unable to pay their debts, filed for bankruptcy. They ended up losing their house and were left wandering with no assets. I don't even know where they live now. They filed for bankruptcy. Seems like it. It's their own responsibility. Well, it's not our concern anymore. Dylan was also interviewed by the police but was just questioned. The police couldn't intervene further. However, this incident reached his workplace, and Dylan was apparently fired. He'll probably regret this for the rest of his life. I'm determined to keep moving forward with Mike, working together as a team.